Welcome to the Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date's July the 21st, 2019, and we have a great watch list for you, and Miss Vegas is going to give it to us. All right, well, good morning, everyone, and maybe afternoon by the time you get around to listening to the video, so let's go through the list. We're going to talk about Boeing, we're going to talk about Tesla, we're going to talk about OSTK, SB, KGC, USAS, NEPT, and I got a little micro penny one also called TTCM. So let's start with Boeing. My gosh, like we talked about this in our videos earlier this week. We talked about that news, how they talked about that expense. So obviously we know this information before the earnings. Now Boeing will have earnings actually pre-market on Wednesday. So that's gonna be Wednesday, July 24. So this will be definitely something on the watch. And I gotta tell you, we have a seriously busy earnings week this week all the fat cats are like definitely showing up we got boeing and tesla so we'll go through that later but uh you know what we had a fun day with boeing on friday because we had option calls from thursday because if you guys noticed on thursday you know boeing was really beaten down and it all these options decayed that the value was you know went from some of them went from 60 cents down to like um 15 20 cents some of them went from a dollar down to you know 60 cents so all the options that were weeklies a lot of them had decayed because obviously the stock pulled back and so obviously the value of the option calls went down so whoever bought puts on thursday did very well so congratulations to those traders but here's what happened here so what myself and jim and uh, we were even, we were talking and we're saying, you know what, Boeing could have a reversal here and um, let's take a look. So we actually picked up some option calls on uh, Thursday in anticipation for a bounce on Friday. I will say also, I did notice Wednesday night, huge order on Boeing for $52 million. So that told me that something's up with this stock and that this is probably still bullish because we keep talking about how bullish we are. So we had an exciting day Friday. I'm just going to turn it right over to Jim because this was his focus on options Friday. So yep. Jim, let's hear about Boeing. Well, I've learned a very good lesson on options this week and I'm, I'm a beginner at options. And I noticed Thursday had a huge sell off as I'm showing this chart right here, just an ugly little sell off on Thursday. So at the very end of that, that day, I started noticing what I thought was an ascending triangle. And I jumped in it, and I bought 20 calls on this ascending triangle. First, I bought 10, and it started decaying on me, and I bought 10 more at $0.19. Cents. Then it decayed a little bit more on down. And so fear started hitting me, and, and I knew the pattern was there, and I knew that this pullback was unnecessary because we've been very bullish on Boeing for about two weeks. I'm going to pull up this five-day chart right now. And you can see what I'm talking about. This thing was just disgusting. It sold off most of the day. Then I called this little reversal out. And once that reversal hit, I had a sending triangle right here that I thought was going to be an ascending triangle. But then it went ahead and pulled back more. But I was in this trade right here, and it pulled back to this lower support. So once it bounced back up even, I went ahead and got out of the trade. My biggest mistake was that right there. If I'd have been took the emotions out of the trade and listened probably Miss Vegas, because I mean she felt the same thing. She felt like it was bearish too. And no bullish, bullish. Well, most of the day you said bearish until yeah, the but end no, of the I day. felt like it was going to reverse. Yeah. So and so we both more or less figured it was going to reverse, and I sold my my option contract, and then Friday came, and I'm going to pull this Friday up. Friday was just a beautiful day. I mean, it hit that bottom down there and just bounced up all day long. Hit every target that I called out in the room. And if I'd have had enough sense to hold on this Thursday, I would have invested my $400 investment would have been $20,000 just on this one trade alone. So it was a big learning uh big learning thing for me last week about options. It kind of opened up my eyes, and I want to give Miss Vegas credit to that. So we're still bullish on this trade right now. And I'm going to pull this yearly chart up again just to show you where I think we can go with this trade. 
I got a three hundred ninety dollar target on it for next week. I think we'll hit that three ninety when earnings come out. First target's going to be right up here, right around this three seventy nine sixty one. And if we can break that three seventy nine sixty one, we're going to bring it on up to about three eighty one fifty three. Up to a higher stage, maybe right around this 38376. And once it breaks that, we've got newer highs to hit. We've got a gap to hit right here at 386. And then I'm pretty sure by next week we'll get back to this 390 area. 38983, maybe just a little bit. Let me get this right in here. 38968. Is going to be our next week's target so I'm going to be coming in here Monday and I'm going to look at the 410 calls maybe but I'm not for sure yet but it's just going to see what happens I'm going to probably swing it into the week to next the 26th so let me pull up the 20-day chart here real fast we've been playing the heck out of this for almost two weeks now we found a bottom down here at 347.90 348 and ever since then she just had a golden green day and just that one sell-off that happened last Monday and then this one that happened uh, Thursday and Thursday when you see a pattern like that and you're bullish on a trade that's gonna be a good opportunity it fell down and touched that 200 EMA and then we had the nine crossover at the end of the day so that was a real good pattern to say man this thing's gonna bounce Friday and I just wish that my emotions did not get involved in this trade so if we can break this 378.66 which was a double top on a 20-day chart if we can break that we're gonna go up and bring it up to 381 up to that 389 390 area and that's gonna be BA and just a great great call for next week especially with earnings coming out and we kind of feel that uh, with the news that came out on it last Thursday it's already in the paperwork it's already embedded in the trade so any kind of earnings that are going to come out it's just going to make the stock run more and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla yeah well Tesla also has earnings uh, Wednesday and you know what their earnings actually is going to be after hours on Wednesday so, you know, we all know Tesla has had, you know, I will say had a, it's had a beautiful run. I mean, we were spotting this when it was even under, was it under 200, Jim? Yes. Uh, we were watching this and then, I, I mean, I just keep, yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I just keep seeing Tesla on the go. I mean, this has just been quite the ride um, with Tesla getting to where it is even, you know, today. Um so it'll be quite interesting to see how the earnings go. I mean, I remember last time the earnings uh, happened, the stock had a huge run, the same like at that moment, and then had a big pullback. So let's see what's going to happen this time. But Jim, let's hear about the Tesla chart because, um, you know, it's closed quite well here. I mean, you know, in the 250s, like, you know, closed at 257.87 after hours, um, you know, it's just, I wonder what's going to happen with their quarter, you know, second quarter earnings. Now, um, you know, I will say that um, apparently one of the biggest skeptics on Wall Street had adjusted their estimates for the company's second quarter. Um, a note to clients, Barclays analyst Brian Johnson stated that he sees the Silicon Valley electric car maker heading to a nearly profitable Q2 earnings report. And that's what he said. He actually said increasing Q2 estimates for Tesla did indeed move the metal, which is what he wrote in his note. Um, so he is raising his forecast for Tesla's second quarter report to a loss of just 16 cents a share, which is a notable jump from his previous, which was at 71 cents a share. So um, we'll see what happens here. And uh, I don't know, it remains to be seen, I guess. Let's hear about that chart, Jim. Yeah, and this is my being in the now quote of the day. Now that Tusk, Musk doesn't qu uh, tweet as much, I think this gives another bullish factor to this stock because he's not a very good tweeter at all. So we hit a yearly pivot point support level, and that was right at 250.29. That's what we had to break. Once we broke that, that was your, I would say, support level. The pivot point area on this stock is going to be right around where the 200 
EMA is right now a little bit higher, which is probably right around 280, 280.26. So I'm going to put that in here for a yearly pivot point. And that means, when I mean by pivot point, that means it's either going to go up from there or back down from there. But right now, we've had a beautiful run on this for the last two months. We did call this neg this low support down here. It was a real uh, topic in the room at 178, 177 area. I said if it pulls back anymore, this thing going to be a strong buy. I played this once before when it was right around 150. And that was a couple years ago. So she's bounced on up ever since. And we had a little argument. Well, not an argument, but we had to beat that 200. And once we passed that 200, and we hustled around right around that 210 area. It did run up from that 210 and pull right back from that 210. And ever since then, she's just had a nice little run up. So I think we we are at the lower support of the yearly channel on this stock. And to bring it up to a resistance level of 268.16, where the 200 EMA is on the yearly daily, is my target for this trade. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. And we can get a better vision of it. You can see how this beautiful run on the 20 days been all the way down here from 215 all the way to a high of 259.96 and I'm going to put 259.68 as a resistance to break on this trade right now. But if it pulls back, you got a support level right here at the 253.49, that's going to be your low support, low, let me repeat that, low. And then your second Third support is going to be right here on the 34 EMA on the 20, which is at 255.71, but I'm going to lower it to 255.34 with a resistance. First support level right here at the 257.10. Then that's where we pulled back to after hours. And then with resistance, we got a break. It's going to be the 259.68. The next resistance after that is going to be 261.44. Let me pull up this yearly chart one more time, and you can jot these other resistance levels that I have on here down. And I see another one right, well, I'm not going to go to that one. I see another one right there. And these little trend lines are examples of candlesticks on the previous, on that, on that 52 week. So we're going to make this a little bit bigger, see if I can... So we got a low support at 250. We're not going to see that. We do have a support level at 253.49. That's going to be a low low. Your third second support is going to be right here at 255.34, and your first support is going to be here at 257.10. Resistance to break is going to be the 259.68, 261.44, and 264.07 with a high resistance of 268.16. Feel free to stop these videos at any time, copy and paste these charts for your own personal reference. Please don't go by by numbers, just make they, sure they kind of coincide with what you think. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Overstock. This is a stock that we've been very bullish on for a little while now. Okay, so we're going to talk about Overstock.com. So as you know, um you know, the CEO is very into this blockchain. And, you know, there was a comment made back in June that uh, he was thinking to get out of the retail sector. He found that it was just too competitive and really wants to focus on the blockchain industry. Um, and there was also, he did, a, he did say that he was approached by two retail buyers. Uh, maybe, you know, in the event that he was thinking to get rid of his OSTK uh, website, uh, who knows who could take it over. Can you imagine like Amazon taking that over? I wouldn't be shocked. Oh my! Um, think about that. My God, like that would like send this stock in a frenzy. And you know, this was a forty-eight dollars stock at one time in the last fifty-two weeks. I mean, so talk about a bargain. I mean, this is a bargain. Um, you know, the earnings are not due till August, so we still have time. Um, definitely, the stock is overbought, and uh, I really do believe that they're going to get very involved in this blockchain stuff and. Um, the fact that, you know, Facebook's getting involved in the Libra um, just reinforced that what he's looking to do in blockchain, um, he said the, the green lights are all there. So I won't be surprised down the road we see some serious action happening on OSTK as a company, uh, making some serious uh, changes. Um, 
and moving into some new industries and and who knows if they're going to ever get out of the retail looks like that's on the brain of the ceo so let's talk about the ostk chart jim because um, it's looking definitely overbought and uh, it's definitely looking on a strong uptrend because the Bollinger Bands to me look very wide uh, and uh, looks like it's ready for a move. Yes. So I'm going to turn it over to you to talk all about it. Vegas and I started talking about this stock when it was a little above 10 bucks, and that's when that 9 EMA crossed over that 34 right down here. Ever since then, she's had Greek candles all the way up to the resistance level that we hit, which was a new high off that channel of $20. We hit 20.02 Friday on it. or uh, Yeah, I think it was Friday we hit it. Let me look, pull this up. Well, I'll pull that up in a second. So we had that that 9 or that nine cross over the 34, and we've almost touched that 200 EMA on a 20-year daily. This stock had a high in a year of $48.00. And analysts have targets on this from 34 to 48 dollars. If you go back and look in the news, so we're going to pull up the 20 day. And I was telling Vegas this morning that I think this is getting ready for a buy again because it pulled back to a 1737 level here. I had a 1710 support called on this trade, and she ran off and she had a new high on that 20 day up here at 20 dollars and two cents. So that's a three dollar sell off that started about midday Thursday and all day Friday and now that I think we're in ready for a reversal we've got a resistance level that we got to hit at 1786 if we can bust past that 1786 we got another resistance right here at 1841 and then you've got your your other resistances up here I'm going to go ahead and we you can see we've had higher highs on the last three times it's broke out with a neckline of right around this 1710 area and we did not quite pull back to that right now so I'm, I'm pretty positive almost 90 percent that this stock will be turned around next week hitting the resistance level of 1896 and breaking that 20 day high of twenty dollars and if it breaks that 28 20 that twenty dollar high on a 20 day our next resistance on this trade it's going to be right there around 2023 and then 2226 and that's going to be up there I mean 2226 is going to be my 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 next resistance target to get to but I think the pullback we had Thursday or Friday is going to reverse on us and that's OSTK the next one we're going to talk about is going to be SB okay so SB is safe bulkers this one's in the shipping sector Located out in Greece, and you know what, safe bulkers. I have to say, I actually want to give a shout out to uh, Joseph, and he's the one that brought safe bulkers to our attention. And uh, when I looked at it, um, what I really liked is the weekly chart is just beautiful. I mean, uh, it's had some range contraction. The stock is overbought, but I love the pocket pivot. He knows I love pocket pivots, and this is ready for a breakout, in my opinion. Um, we do have earnings, though, just to caution. The earnings are coming this week. I believe it's on the 23rd, uh, so keep a watch on that. But you know what? Safe Bulkers, I mean, take a look at their company. They do, they're into dry bulk transportation, and they also, in particular, coal, grain, and iron ore. And, uh, you know, the company has, just so you know, 41 vessels. 11 of them are actually Echo Design. Um, and uh, they have also 14 Panamax vehicles. Um, so that's really, you know, they have a huge fleet, obviously. Um, so, and, uh, ready for that. and I'd love to hear what Jim's going to say. Now, I will say I'm in the swing trade at the moment. I believe there's others in the swing trade currently um, out of early last week, towards the end of the week, I think, that we started talking about this. Um, so, Jim, let's hear you because this is out of a chart. All right. Well, this is SB for a chart right here. We do have a beautiful 20 day with a consolidated area right here between 195 and 213. Actually, I'm going to adjust this to consolidate it to around 208. I got them other ones off of a yearly chart, but I'm going to pull up that yearly chart and let you look at it 
We did have a yearly high of 353 and she has sold off most of that 52 weeks down to a double bottom at 128. And she did run up to, I would say, probably a pivot point area, which is right around the 195 and pulled back to that 128 and bounced back up and then broke that little double top. So here in the last couple weeks, we've had a new channel. Let me pull this up on the 20 day and I'll show you what that new channel is. That channel's right in here between the 195 and that 208 area to a little bit higher to around 210. And that 210 lands right on the uh, 34 EMA. Thursday we did have a crossover. Usually when I'm watching trades like this, I watch them follow the 9. And when they go below the 9, it shows a little sign of weakness. But all it was doing was consolidating for a week here, about 5 or 6, 7 days. Pulled back to that support level and then bounced on up and had to break out Thursday and Friday. So we had a 230 high on it. My resistance level is going to be right here at 227. We got to break that 231 resistance. It can pull back to the support level of 220, no lower than this 208. That's going to be your low, low support. Anything below that's going to be a strong buy. And it can pull back here to 195, so that's not much of a spread. So that's going to be your real strong buy, the 195. But I like to see a continuation on this trade. So we're going to pull up a yearly again. I'm going to magnify this. I'm going to see if I can find anything else in here. Right around there at 237. So I'm going to magnify this and give you your resistance levels. Low, low support is going to be right down here at the 195 to 206, 208 area. Your third support is at 212, 220, and 224 is going to be your first. That's actually going to be a pivot point. If it's going to hit the resistance levels, we got to break 231, 237, 242, to 251. And then after that, we can reassess it. This is going to be SB, Safe, Bokers, and Company.com. The next one we're going to speak of is going to be KBC Gold. Yeah, it's actually KGC. Oh, KGC, it's Ken excuse me, yes. Yeah, that's all right. So, uh, Ken Ross Gold Corporation, this is a Canadian company. And uh, you know what? I did mention that gold and silver are still hot commodities. In my opinion, I keep hearing a lot about it. You know, some people don't really like gold when the, there could be some, you know, trade war tensions and things like that. But you know what? It's still a commodity that's safe, um, in my opinion. But um, let's take a look at Ken Ross. So I did like this actual uh, chart here because uh, this actual stock, Ken Ross Gold, very nice volume. And you know what? Canadian company, new 52-week high and still looks like it has room to still move. Um, the Bollinger Bands uh, were starting to walk. And uh, I like that because it looks like it's starting to wake up. And also, I saw a little pocket pivot there the other day. Uh -oh. um, so I really like the beautiful setup here. Now, the earnings on this is going to be not this week, next week. So still safe, in my opinion, to swing trade this, even probably day trade it. Um, and so let's see what Jim has to say. I mean, the volume on it, uh, the float's still huge, but the volume was very good. I uh, really like this beautiful new uptrend coming here. And I want to hear what Jim has to say about this particular chart. Jimmy likes it too. Jimmy likes the gold sector. And back on 524 is when this breakout started on this trade. And ever since then, you've had a very good, nice run, which is almost two months now, all the way up here to 438 with a low down here right around the 312 area. So I've got some support levels I've worked out here on the yearly. We are at a year high. We did hit a year high of 438 Friday. So that's going to be the hard resistance we got to break, 438. I'm going to just pull up a three-year chart just to see if I can see anything different on the three-year. Ooh, we got more highs we can hit. We can bring it up to 445 next week to a resistance high that was rejected on the 200 right around the 451 area. So we're going to count that as going to be our hard resistance to get to. If we, and right now we're sitting at 431. So actually, 
you know this thing can go up a little bit higher I see that 455 but I gotta try to find another window here and we're gonna bring it all the way up to 4 469 so let's call that a real strong hard resistance if we hit that that's gonna be nice but we're gonna think this might pull back just a little bit so I'm gonna pull up the 20 day I'm gonna look at the 20 day and I'm gonna try to find a couple of little trend lines here I see a 419 pullback maybe this area right in here you know I could say 423 but that's not much of a spread so 424 this is how I see the trade I see a low support at 412 that's going to be a strong buy anything below that 412 is going to be your support level for number three number two is going to be right around 419 and your first support is going to be at 424 with a resistance to break at 438 actually I can lower it to 437 but let's call 437 438 to resistance high of 445 and let me pull up that yearly one more time magnify this up a little bit 445 to 451 and that's where we're going to try to get this thing to go up to that 470 area this is going to be KCG, and we're very bullish on the gold right now. Low support, remember, 412. We don't want it to go any lower than that 412. 401, my old employee number, is going to be a very strong buy. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be USAS. Okay, so USAS, guess what? <laughs> this is what? funny what? enough, the ticker USAS. This is for America Silver Corporation. This is a Canadian company. Ooh. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, so this is a Canadian company. And um, as you can see um, here, they have a very nice website. And uh, obviously, they're into the mining. They're into silver. And uh, they have so many different things going on. They have, um, you know, they do precious metals. And uh, they also have a project in the canyon in Nevada. And they recently also constructed the San Rafael mine in Mexico, which is a f at full production, by the way. Um, so that's really good. So I bring this to your attention. Um, they also had some news, by the way, too. I just want to mention uh, they had some news on Friday. And the news was that um, Eric Sprott has purchased 3.9 million shares, a little over oh 3.9, at $3.30 per share. For a total investment, by the way, of $10 million in a non-brokered private placement, that is a huge, huge buy. Um, and uh, the company also mentioned that um, the agreement to sell the company's option uh, to a subsidiary has been terminated. And uh, so that's interesting. Um, so what's happened is following the termination of that agreement, the proceeds of the private placement will be used to satisfy the equity financing of the loan facility for the Sandstorm Gold Limited. Um, so they're very excited, by the way, to have Eric Sprott increase his ownership, by the way, to above 8% and continue to support the company as a major shareholder, which is what Darren Blasuti, who's the president and CEO of the company, said. And this private placement will be closing uh, shortly once they get all the regulatory approvals, including the approval, by the way, from the Toronto Stock Exchange and obviously the NYSE. Um, So the common shares that are going to be placed on hold for four months plus a day from the closing date. And uh, I think that's really, really good. Now, do you guys know who's Eric Sprott? Does anybody know? Nope. Nobody can tell me? I don't. Well, um, you don't. Um, so this gentleman, Eric Sprott, um, he used to be, uh, he's a Canadian billionaire businessman, just so you know. And uh, he used to be an investor. He used to actually advise investors to buy gold before 2008 financial crush, uh, crash. And he was actually the chairman of Sprott Inc., which is a Canadian-based management firm from 2010 all the way to 2017. And um, he also started his career. He actually was like a research analyst for Merrill Lynch, and which is also Bank of America. He was a fund manager. And then he sold his company and uh, 
brought securities. And then he actually, believe it or not, he's just, he's gives, he donates a lot of money. He donated $10 million to Carleton University who renamed the business school, the Sprott School of Business. Anyhow, um, he's basically a longtime gold bull and he claims to hold 90% of his assets in gold and silver. Till this day, that's what he does. He's invested in just gold and silver and he's a billionaire. His net worth uh, last checked was about $1.2 billion and that was like, in 2017 i don't have an update on his latest net worth but you know what for him to invest money in this company that's big news that's big news so for those of you that like longer term holds or swing trade you might want to check this one out because i like the fact that mr eric sprott is involved and uh you know that's his specialty is investing in silver gold and for him to put that kind of money on friday that's good that's great news for the company so yep. we can only see this eventually potentially grow as an actual stock price maybe longer term obviously not expecting an overnight <laughs> huge run but at the same time you know longer term this has a future so jim let's hear about from you and by the way the weekly chart's gorgeous too yep. so i let jim talk all about it because that's his specialty yeah and, and as she mentioned he bought almost four million shares at the price of 330 and we're not oh, there yeah. yet, so we got to at least have a target to go to this thing to three thirty at least. So let well, me listen. You know what? I mean, the like you said, the stock the stock currently is not even at that price. So the fact that he paid three thirty for the shares, and we're just we're under three dollars here at two ninety. I mean, we are ahead by forty cents. So to me, this is a gift. The fact that the stock's at this price below what he paid. Yeah. Imagine getting a better deal than Eric Sprott. So, uh, you know, he's uh, someone to, uh, you know, to be looked at. So uh, he's no joke there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's hear about it from you. We got a three-year high up here at 504 with a resistance of 474 for me as I study the base of the candles, not the wicks. But we do have a three-year high at 504. We did hit a, a one-year high, as you can see, Friday to almost three dollars we hit a 299 high i've got resistances past that and i've got a little few supports below it the resist let's go with the supports first let me pull up the 20 day i got a low support down here it did pull back a little bit but we're back at 285 and it closed at 290 so i've got a descending triangle breakout right here thursday that happened before right before the market closed and she bounced on up to a high of right around 287. So that neckline is going to be here at right around 275. That's going to be your first support level, 275. Your second one is going to be right down here at 268 and 260. Anything below that, 275, I'm going to consider a buy. As long as it stays above that neckline at 275, we've got a resistance that we got to break. And that's going to be up there past the 290 and the $3 mark. If we can break that $3, we're going to go to 305. And let me, I think it was 324. Let me pull up that yearly one more time, magnify this up a little bit. And then pull it back. 305, 321, 334, and 342. Once we pass that 342, we'll reassess it. But our target's going to be that 330 to 334 area. And that's going to be USAS, and I do like the fact that we're about 40 cents below that, that initial $4 million share buy at 330 And the next one is one that I've spotted and one that uh, Miss Vegas also spotted with some of her trader friends, and that's NEPT. Okay, so Neptune Wellness Corporation. Another, i got to tell you, Canadian companies... Yeah, you know, you got to make a watch list for Canada. I got to give congratulations to these Canadian companies. This is a, can a Canadian company. I didn't even know that. Just saw that now. So they're into the biotech healthcare sector, Neptune Corp. Uh, you can check it out here. I hate the fact that they put on their website that if you want to go to their website, they want you to put your date of birth. Like, what do they care? I mean, you're not, you can't buy anything online. Um, so I don't know why they make you put your date of birth. But you know what? It's because they're also into the cannabis sector. Uh, because, you know, they specialize in the purification extraction of cannabis products. But still, what I got to put my date of birth on there? 
Um, that is ridiculous. That not, I don't see any of these other websites doing that. I just find it annoying. You can put a um, fake one in. Anyway. What's that? Put yeah, I know you could put a fake one, but I'm just saying, like, to get just to get into the website to read or research, I just find it annoying. Yeah, you know, I'll like all these other companies don't make you do that. Anyways, um, so what is happening with uh, Neptune? Well, you know what? This chart is, again, another beauty. And uh, actually, Jim's the one that brought it to my attention, too, on NEPT. 52-week uh, high, uh, definitely beautiful pocket pivot. Love the volume. Beautiful volume surge on that chart. And it's definitely uh, overbought. Um, I think also, if I'm not mistaken, um, we have it uh, as an active swing trade. Let me see here. We did mention also they had some news. Uh, Jim, you posted that news on Friday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and I also want to bring uh, bring an attention to my team at the trade exchange because they're the ones that actually brought this actual stock to my attention. Um, and how they brought it to my attention was that they did mention some unusual call activity for the August 16 strike of six dollars. So August 16th the expiry date of those contracts. But there was over 5,500 plus uh, contracts purchased on Thursday morning. And so we started to see um, that there was some, you know, we see bullish bets happening in NEPT. So uh, they also did get a license amendment approval from Health Canada back in June. So this company, this stock, one to watch. We're seeing from all levels on the swing trade side, also on the option side looking to see a lot of bullish flow coming through and it's coming through even on friday more bullish bets were coming through on nept so keep a watch on those again for the option traders uh it's the six dollar strike and these ones expire august uh 16. i had them around 60 cents and by the way if you follow on social media my social media on stock twits or twitter for i love stocks you will see I shared this with you guys. So this is not a surprise. If you follow the social media, I shared an EPT trade idea with you guys in real time. Jim, let's hear about NEPT. NEPT did close a, a private placement of $41 million on it on July 18th. That's a bullish signal to me. And also, um, they appointed Michael... Camaretta for chief executive officer on July 8th, which is another bullish sign to me. So we're going to look up the, the trade itself. We did hit a 52 week high Friday at 622 with the base of the wick on a daily at right around 613. So we're going to call that a resistance level. We're going to pull up the 20 day chart. Let's look at the three year, see what a three year tells us. We are at a three year high. So we're going to pull up the 20 day chart. We did have an ascending, we had a channel breakout on it Friday where she just broke on up, kept a nice little trend line, bottom support level right here on the 20 day at 607. So we're going to call that your second, your first support right there at 607. Your second support is going to be right here at 588. That's going to be your low. I'm going to consider that maybe your second with your low support at 573. The resistance is we got a break, which is setting up right now for new highs. And we're just going to go with even numbers on this. So we're going to try to hit the $640 mark, $6.40. If we can break past that, we're going into newer highs. But any pullback, low support is going to be right around 573. Second support at 588, with your first support right here in this area, right above, right below $6. That's going to be your first support. The breakout resistance is going to be at 620 with targets that we'll just have to follow the flow. Hope, hopefully the momentum is still behind this trade. Looks like the TTM is definitely behind it both Thursday and Friday with just a little bitty flattening out consolidated area for three days previous of that, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we did have a high on that Monday right at 512. So that's a good dollar bounce in a week on this trade right here. NEPT, I'm, I'm really bullish on this stock. And the next one and last one we're going to talk about is going to be a sub penny, and that's going to be here at TTCM. Okay, so Jim, my attention to TTCM.
time it's an OTC stock located in Arizona in the Oro Valley. Zaz. You're gone, Miss Vegas. I'm here. I'm not gone. I'm here. Gotta we, can, be we can't hear you. I'm here. I'm here, Jim. There we go. Okay, we got you now. I don't know. It's got to be something maybe on your end. I don't know. I'm here. I've been talking all this time. Okay. I'm here. We hear you. Okay, so I said that uh, this Tata Chrome is, uh, you know, they have a co parent company, by the way, and they're into blockchain technology. They're in the uh, Oro Valley in uh, Arizona, and they have the, they're the parent company of uh, ClickZ, and, and uh, all, obviously they're publicly traded on TTCM. So you could check out what they do, uh, but I will say that they did make a submission uh, to, they did submit um, what they call ArcNet 1.0 to the App Store for Google Play for a broader beta release. And apparently they have also Honeycomb Digital, which has which is rebuilding the ArcNet 1.1. So this is this particular, I don't really know much about this company. Uh, it's hard to find information, but basically what looks like what they do is they are a global market economy for the smartphone users and uh looks like they monetize uh videos and social interactions of people that are using the smartphone and also the next generation they're talking about fast blockchain for everyone oh. so that is so interesting because the founder of this company is uh john leonard and uh this gentleman here um he is the founder of this particular company and he's also a chief scientist believe it or not at the hughes aircraft company um he's also got a phd in mathematics and a bachelor of science in physics from the university of arizona um so this company looks like they do so many different technology um imagery image solutions by the way supported by crypto and blockchain professionals so you know what remember i was talking about ostk overstock well here's another company that's really believing in the crypto blockchain um industry okay so this is one to watch and i'm really glad you found this because uh this is a very interesting um actual company and uh, there's lots to go on because it looks like here that um they're looking to have a um a new app and they're looking to have some actual global rollout in 2020 so that's so so interesting okay jim over to you because and, and do you have the website by chance yeah i pulled it up yeah you're able to pull it up yep okay so you could show you could showcase that yep okay great so i'll just turn it over to you to talk about the chart but very cool website um and i like what they're doing and uh very intrigued about the leverage leveraging of the blockchain technology and the crypto space um that's going to be interesting and they're going to use that to monetize and sell their images very cool okay jim let's hear all about it all right always remember these little penny stocks are a little bit more risky but also this is a beautiful little 20-day chart that i'm looking at too we did have initial pullback after that initial run up to around zero one eight five it did pull back to support level of zero one two eight so that's what we're going to call as a low support at zero one two eight zero one two five somewhere right around in there with a low support right here around one one three one one let's just go ahead and call it one 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 number one and the resistance breakout up here right around the 238 which we did hit 24 high on friday and it held up good into the after hours which i don't think these can trade after hours so we have a low we have a pivot point area a support area here at 185 we're going to cover that in red that's what i think it can pull back to for a buy back in anything below that's going to be a strong buy if it decides to pull back to this 1212 that'll be okay and i'm going to put a low low support down here at 111 which i don't think it can do but if it pulls back to this 185, that's going to be a strong buy for a resistance breakout here at 238, 24. And I'm going to pull this one-year chart up 
you see that's a one year high. Let's pull up a three year and see what a three year tells us, if anything at all. Yeah, we got a couple other places down here we can call resistance. One at 263. And one at two eight two nine. Let me bring this a little bit lower. Two nine three, with a yearly three year high of three four eight. So that kind of you know. This is definitely a penny stock. We're gonna pull this twenty day up one more time. Low support, no lower than one eight five. If it goes below that, you've got a low low support of one one one. To 128 with a resistance breakout of 24. And let me pull up this yearly again. 24 to pull that three year up. Magnify this up. We can see these other numbers. You could stop this at any time to write these resistance levels down and see if they match up to yours. 263, 293, and then 339. And if that breaks that 339, we're going off to the races up to five cents. And that is TTCM. And what a great watch list that Miss Vegas come up with this week for us for next week. Keep an eye on all these. And also, I want to remind everybody, and she's got a couple other things she wants to bring up. But I also want to remind everybody to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates on our channel. We do have links here on the side that take us to our stock twits page and also takes it to our Twitter page. Miss Vegas has been posting a lot of alerts on both stock twits and Twitters that we call out in the room. If you're not able to join the room, we do offer a free trial in the room if you'd like to join. And you sign up there through the chat service link here. And Miss Vegas also added another really exciting link to the trade here, and that's called our stock portal. This will, you're always welcome to enter a ticker here and it will pull up right now it's kind of slow but it'll pull up we'll check that out it'll pull up there it is we'll pull up um, your stats your your vital stats here it, it pull up a chart you also have your block trades on it your SEC filings and also news below it but I'm gonna hand this over to Miss Vegas and let her finish the report she is the boss okay all right don't you forget it i don't so um, I <laughs> um we always joke around so um i wouldn't be able to do these things without jim anyways you know him and i you know we're the yin and the yang as they say <laughs> um so i just want to mention uh jim i have a couple of testimonials i actually just want to share yep um and this is not even solicited information i mean just people and people message me um i had uh, if you look at the first one from Miss AA, um, she was just asking how my mom was doing because, you know, unfortunately my mom's uh, in the hospital right now and hopefully she'll be recovering and coming home soon. So she was just asking how things were going because um, I had to leave earlier this week to go to a meeting, you know, regarding her condition. Um, so she was just asking me genuinely how she was doing and then she was actually talking to me about, you know, how her trade went this week. And she was basically saying that she was been journaling because I told her to journal. And she said that her emotions cost her $8,000. That is crazy. Um, she said that she kept some of these other options, Starbucks, McDonald's, Twitter, and Boeing, and not panic sell, she would have had $10,000 in her account. Um, so that was a big loss for her. Uh, but she said she's learning and she's looking to mitigate her risk. And this is what she what I want to share. She wanted to thank me for getting her into options. She said it's given her more hope for the future, fighting for patriarchy, one option trade at a time, and not to accept poverty or being taken care of. So, you know, I love, like, it actually, like, made me almost want to cry when I read that last sentence because, you know, sometimes people feel like there is no hope, and I don't believe that. I believe there is an opportunity for everyone Sometimes it is about finding and learning about different things from different people and and uh, and trying to learn, even if you have to paper trade it. Sometimes you paper trade it to practice, educate yourself, and learn. So I really love that. Uh, the other testimonial here, the next one, Mr. Ginn. 
um, you know, he wanted to share. Look at his account. Like, Jim, do you see this? Yeah, I see it. Like, he was a trial. He was a trial in our room. And he was, I think he bought some stocks and I, I think a couple of swing trades. And look how he did. Unbelievable. I cannot believe how this gentleman's done so well. And he was on a trial. He was very happy with his experience. And again, it has to do with how is your experience when you go to a room and check it out. It has nothing to do with what is the room like. What matters is the experience. Same thing with when you shop. When I go to shop for a car, there's so We lost you again, Miss Vegas. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. You're back. You know, it cuts me off. Um, don't know what's happening there on your end. Um, you keep blaming but my I'm end, but I'm telling you. I'm just saying. Well, I'm hearing when you're, when you're talking, uh, you sound, you sound like a robot. On. Okay. So, as I was saying, um, where did I get cut off? Do you remember? About right at the beginning of Mr. G-U-I-N. Oh, you told me a little too late. Okay. Well, just show his commentary. The fact that he was on a trial and he had a good experience, and it really is important about your experience when you are trying something out. Um, the next uh, person here, uh, I wanted to mention Tony. If you could showcase his yep. feedback, Jim, can you show that? Yep. Um, so he mentioned that he, you know, he hasn't been here for a while. He was happy to come in to play some options, and look what he says. I love the option plays and the fun you're all having working together. And I actually said, I'm really happy I saw you, and I'm happy that you did bank. He actually traded the spy and made money on the spy. And uh, he said he's determined to rebuild things. Um, he's had, a, you know, his account was in a bit of a mess, um, but he's slowly rebuilding, and he just wanted to thank us for supporting him. And I, what I want to say about supporting him, like, you know, he was a trader that was here full time. Things didn't just work for him uh, with his trading strategies. And, you know, he's decided to, you know, trade now part-time and go back to work uh, full-time, which sometimes you have to do what you have to do for your family. And uh, you know what? The, he, we still keep in contact with him and he's still here. So we're happy to see that he's slowly progressing. Okay. And last but not least, before we go, I want to end it with a motivational quote. Okay. Jim, can you show that? Yep. Okay. So you guys know, I always say I love reading. I love researching, but it's, I want to share this because it doesn't matter how old you are, young, millennials, teenagers, small children, five years old, does not matter. This is from Dr. Seuss and it's so true. And it resonates with me that the more you read, the more, you know, the more you learn, the more places you'll go, you know, knowledge is power. I mean, when you know information about different things and you want to learn about stocks, you want to learn about options, honestly, can be life changing. It's very important to read, very important to, you know, some people hate reading. Okay, fine. So if you don't want to read, then watch a video. Video tutorials are so helpful. It's almost like, you know, the book, book on TV. Um, so you know what? do what you have to do but the bottom line is you're learning and the more in, the more you're learning the more your places you'll go it doesn't matter how old you are i mean honestly like i learned options like in the last year and um i have to say all those years before that i was doing stocks never knew anything about options and i wish someone opened my eyes and said hey you know what why don't you learn about options it's you can use less capital but no one, no one suggested that at all. And believe me, I was in very big, nice, big chat rooms. And uh, I was really disappointed that some of those uh, big traders never suggested it for people with smaller accounts. Um, no offense to them, they're good traders, but I was just surprised. Never mentioned. Um, anyways, more you read, the more you learn, the more places you'll go. I encourage you all to watch videos, to learn, to read. Um, because it just enhances your knowledge and makes your, um, hopefully, grow your account and better at what you do. And Jim, what do you have to say about? That? I agree. I, I've, I've followed many people, and and there's a certain time where we all have our up and downs. Even I do it. You know, I've had a, a rough couple of weeks or a few weeks back, and but 
it just seems like it turns around. You just lo lose a couple concepts and then they just fall right back into place. And we do love encouraging people. I get encouraged by all the beginners we try to teach and, and inspire, and I'm inspired by them to even do better as myself. So that's basically what I want to say. And I definitely have been inspired by Miss Vegas and other people in the room and other chat rooms I've been in, you know. Every place is like a, a new home, a new world to me. And that's about it. We're going to finish off here with the Aftermarket Sunday Editions report, which is usually longer. And today's date is July the 21st, 2019, and we love stocks. <laughs>